I'm going to draw a picture today, paint a picture today of a bellflower, violet colored bellflower. I wanted to try my new Winsor Newton Cotman watercolor set, 12 colors. It'll be the first time I've ever used um, a more expensive kind of watercolors. This is not really expensive, but it's more than I've ever paid. I usually use something like uh, Artist Law from Michaels or Dollar Romy uh, Rowney, which I usually purchase at Walmart. You can get several colors. I think it's 12 or 15 for 6 or 7 dollars and I really like those because a lot of time my watercolor painting is kind of like uh, it's more like painting with uh, acrylics because I tend to be thick and don't really do real what you call I would call watercolor style but I'm going to attempt it today with a smaller set um, with tubes I mean without tubes so let's see how it goes okay I'm going to attempt to do this keep it in frame and keep my head out of the picture might be hard because never really done this before did a practice one though it didn't really turn out I'm using the pin water brush that came with the Winsor Newton Kahneman set because I could find my favorite paintbrush that I use, generally use for watercolor. I think it's about a number 8 or 10 round. It's just a cheap one. I just like the feel of it in my hand, but I couldn't find it. And so I thought I'd just go ahead and use this, and this one probably more appropriate anyway because this is such a smaller set and brush than I usually use so let's go for it so I think I'm gonna try to use the violet here I'm gonna try to get a light wash of it uh, I'm sorry there's really kind of a shadow here on my page and now if you noticed in the beginning I had drawn this picture in with pencil well I went over it with it with um, watercolor pencil over the pencil lines and then I tried to erase what of the pencil lines I could and now the background is done in just a prisma like these lines here are done in a prisma color just a regular color pencil because I couldn't also find my black watercolor pencil but I thought it was black and it's not it appears to be sap green but I think it'll look all right but let's go for this I don't know what kind of mess this is going oh that looks like I got it pretty dark here so let's try to it's really pretty though. The colors are really nice. So I'm going to have to do a whole lot of... To get a wash, I'm going to have to use a whole lot more water. So I'm kind of dipping over here in my... have a little container with some water in it. Okay, that looks... Now you know that works out pretty good because it will give it more of a form a little more shape and I think these are going to go a lot farther than what I'm used to my watercolors going I guess it pays to have it's a little more expensive of a set so I think that's what we're going to try to do I kind of like this it's pretty So I'm just trying to get some color on here, give the flower a little shape. I guess I like to draw flowers. I've no, never done this particular one before, 
but I thought it would be good for my first time trying to do a video. I may get my head in the way because I'm not sure if I told you already like in my introduction video but I am low vision and my head and my hands might get in the way a little bit till especially to like kind of get used to what I'm doing here but I'm really liking how this is kind of going right now Such a pretty color. I, I enjoy the colors of this set. And one thing you'll learn about me is I really despise mixing colors. I just like to have my color already made up for me. <laughs> I know that's kind of a bad thing thing to be when maybe when you're trying to be an artist but I guess everybody has their own little idiosyncrasies and I think the thing that turned me against it was when I took my oil painting class we had to mix so many colors and I made such big messes everywhere all over my house ruined a lot of clothes that I'd rather not have ruined so Maybe I'll get better at it. Enjoy it more with colors. Watercolors, they aren't quite so nasty to mess with. You, they're easily cleaned up. Hmm. I'm really liking how this is looking. Yes, I'm a low vision artist. And I really struggle sometimes to do what I'm supposed to do and make things look nice. But this is kind of turning out pretty good so far. We shall see. And that's one reason why I like to use a watercolor pencil to draw out my my shape of my flower or whatever I'm drawing because it'll kind of blend in with your watercolor and you won't have such harsh outlines I don't know but outlines are kind of if you're not doing cartoon like things or design kind of things they really well, according to my teachers, they kind of flatten things out. But to be honest, on a lot of things, I kind of like them. But I'm still t uh, in school, so I'm trying to, you know, follow the rules. And then when I get out of school, I'll do kind of do what I want to do. Now this paper I'm using is just from a sketchbook. It's gonna probably buckle up my paper and stuff, but I don't really mind. I don't really, you know, it's, it's not where the color's not going through. Now most of the time my sketchbook, I do some drawing and ideas and Thing, I do a lot of things. My sketchbook is just, it's not just a sketchbook. My sketchbook is a gratitude journal, a prayer journal, oh, just a list journal, just all, just, it's, my sketchbook is my center it keeps me centered 
does uh, you know my artwork my spiritual life all of that stuff is just um that's what i use my sketchbook for so do any of you do your use your sketchbooks for anything besides sketching tell me about it in the comments if you do i'd be interested to know how other people do their sketchbooks now let's see I guess I'm not going to talk much more here. I'm going to try to concentrate on what I'm doing where I can try to do a pretty good job, you know? Trying to go a little darker, give it some roundness in places, and I'll go back in and I'll try to add some more colors to make it more interesting and give it more shape. It's one thing I like about watercolors, though. You can use one color and get a whole lot of different shades and tones, so. It's really, oh, I really like this. So, uh, I'm trying to keep my, you know, I'm starting this channel using my iPhone. Hopefully in the very near future, I'll be able to get a camera and do a lot better for you guys. Maybe a better stand or something. But right now, I'm using what I had and I can't afford to go all in right away. So, hopefully soon I can purchase some equipment. I think it's already too dry. I was trying to blot up some of the color there, but I think it's already too dry. So, we're just going to go with it. <laughs> and, let's see. I have, I'm using a reference photo on a, you can use it on the computer, or you can you go in a, a website called Pixabay, and there are several ro royalty-free images that you can use as an artist in any way you want to. So you don't have to worry about infringing on anybody else's uh, intellectual property. So that's a really valuable resource for people who are artists and trying to learn. So you can copy people's work in this website and it's okay. But always, if you do copy something, try to, it's never going to turn out exactly like the picture you see, but always try to add your own little flair anyway. Make it yours. Okay, I think my head's probably in the way. Hopefully I can edit out the worst of that before I upload the video. Bear with me. And one thing about watercolor, you think you got it too dark, but let it dry before you get too upset and try to change too much because it gets a whole lot lighter as it dries and it might be just perfect when it's dry just what you wanted okay Uh, 
kind of wishing I had a better brush. I did order some from Dick Blick. They're not here yet. So hopefully they'll be a better alternative than this little small thing. And maybe the painting I'm doing might be just a little bit too big for this small thing, but that's something I'll figure out as I go along. It's one thing about an artist. You never stop learning. Never. You can always improve. But don't forget, you can also learn from anyone. There may be someone that's less skilled than you, not been at it as long, but they may have learned something that you never learned, so be open to learning from everybody. I may have said this before, but I've learned a lot of things about art on YouTube. So... Don't discount YouTube artist. Well, it really gets dark fast. I think this set is going to last a while, though. I mean, I've used covered a big area here and it's hardly made a dent in my watercolor palette. Let's see now let's go a little darker in between the I guess these are the stamens of the flower. Let's try to go a little darker in there. I don't know. So the purple of the flower will show up. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit like something, you know, it might not turn out at all, so we'll see, we're going to see. Okay, I think I'm going to let this, uh, I might give it a little more down here. Just do it a little more. Let it dry and then see what it's going to look like. Alright. Now, oh, I forgot about the back side of the flower. So let me go ahead and work with that a little bit before I change colors. And when you're doing watercolor, it's okay to use a little white space. It will help give your painting some shape. So, let's 
so don't try to when you do especially when you're watercolor watercolor they we use the white of the paper quite a bit so consider that when you're trying to paint leave a little white Other color mixed in there. Alright. Now we're going to change over to, um, Let's see, I think I'm going to go for sap green. And let's see, it'll be easier. I've got my colors painted out here on my sketchbook so I don't have to guess so much. So the sap green will be right here. So I'm going to turn my palette around, put some in here. I'm going to try to add some more water so I don't get too dark too fast. I think I did that with the purple quite a bit. So, let's see. So I think I've already used up everything I had in my brush. So, I'm just going to dip in my container. Okay. Let me try to do this over this way. I'm going to try to keep my head out of the... Rain. Oop. Let my purple. That's well, alright. You can get a little purple with your green. That happens in watercolor, especially. Your colors are going to get mixed. So you need to let it dry really good. If you don't want it to mix, and then again, it still might mix a little. Yeah. That actually doesn't look too bad yet. So. Don't know if that's going to turn out. We shall see. Okay, I'm going to go up here. Do the stem. Get a little bit more going. My light source is kind of coming from the right bottom corner. So anything left, oh, I picked up some, I believe this is Viridian Hue, but that looks pretty good. So I'm going to not worry about it. Now let's get some more sap. Start painting the leaves. So basically, I've never done any kind of painting long enough to get real good at it. I've done some oil, I've done some acrylic, I've done some watercolor, I've done some mixed media, but I don't really stick to anyone long enough to get really good. And that's because I'm still learning, I'm trying to figure out which one I like, which one is easiest and most fun for me to work with. And I enjoy all of them for different reasons. I like oil because it's so beautiful. It turns, the result is so wonderful, but oh, it's so messy, especially for me. Okay, which one's sap green? I see. I got, uh, yeah. There we go. Oop, got some on there. Darken it up a little bit.
Okay, it's kind of, kind of starting to take shape. And I might go over this when it's dry with some either some watercolor pencil or color pencil. We'll see what I think when I get closer. It's all right to mix medias. It really gives it a little something. All right, I think I'm gonna go back in here with some of this Viridian hue and just add a little something else. Now I think I'm going to go in my purple violet with a little um, ultramarine blue. I kind of think that it's kind of the same color family. So let's see. I think we will, that will be way down here. So... Usually when you mix colors, at least two or three within the same color family, or um, maybe um, complementary colors such as purple and yellow, it really adds something. See, that's making those uh, violets look deeper and richer, you know, art. I'm not used to these things coming out yet, so I'm popping them out everywhere, making a mess with them. It's kind of annoying, but it's also good so you can clean your palette quite a bit easier. I'll put some in this green here to make it a little richer. And Add some a little bit of sh form and shadow here. Okay, that seems to help a little. Now Put some in the center here and give it a little richer color. Okay. 
Now my Chinese white, I'm gonna try to see if it will do anything. I don't think it will, but you know, we'll see. Didn't do too much. All right, I'm gonna try to use a little Pain Gray mixed with some of this violet. Try to see what that'll do over here. Since this flower is laying on a a pretty floor. Oh, well, that's all right.
Okay, here is my finished result along next to my um, picture I used as a reference. I think it's pretty good for my first time painting on a video and also painting with Winsor Newton Cotman. Of course it could use improvement but it's a practice piece and it was fun and interesting. <coughs> I went in off video, used some uh, of my um, watercolor pencils to kind of define some areas and add some shading and some different, you know, in different places to give it shape and form. And I also went in and used, look, if, since I used green in the leaves and in the background, I also put a little bit in the flower, the violet part of it, to give it unity. And did the same with the background and the leaves. It's kind of subtle in most places. You can't see it, but it still gives it unity. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I know I um, will get better. Thanks.